Hello everyone, welcome back to another session in dentistry and more. Today's topic is enamel. So enamel, as you all know, it is the hardest biological tissue. So this session is about uh, the beginning part of enamel. So we'll be covering the enamel under a few sessions. So let's see the details of uh, enamel and its structures. Enamel, it is an epithelially derived protective covering of variable thickness over the entire surface of crown. Okay, it is above the crown. Uh, so, hope you remember the stages of tooth development, the cap stage, bud stage, and uh, it starts from bud stage, then cap stage, and then bell stage so hope you remember all the stages because um, the enamelogenesis the ameloblast um, and its uh, conversion to enamel it's all interconnected so hope you remember all those um, concepts well and clear so let's start enamel it is a epithelial covering which is maybe uh, in variable thickness over the entire surface of crown and it is as I told it is the hardest biological tissue and it attains maximum thickness around 2 to 2.5 millimeter on the cusp of molars and premolars so at cuspal regions of molars and premolars it has a maximum thickness and the minimum thickness that is uh, near the neck of the tooth so this part neck of the tooth it has a thinnest uh, width that is uh, like a knife so knife edge around the neck of the tooth and maximum cuspal thickness is seen at the cusp of molars and premolars so let's see some of the physical properties the thickness i mentioned 2.5 mm thickness around the cusp of molars and premolars and 2 mm at the incisal edge and knife edge thickness at cervical region so thick at maxillary lingual surface of molars and mandibular buccal surfaces so colors it uh, depends on thickness and translucency of enamel it changes from grayish white to yellowish white so yellowish at thin areas with underlying enamel and grayish uh, at thick opaque enamel uh, hardness it is uh, 296 noob hardness number so as i mentioned it is the hardest biological tissue and peripheral regions are more harder and solubility it dissolves in acidic media that is why caries is happening because when sucrose is acting uh, sucrose is converted to lactic acid by the presence of bacteria there will be solubility of enamel it leads to cavitation which is known as dental caries regarding the permeability the enamel is selectively permeable uh, the route of passage occurs via road sheath enamel lamellae enamel tufts which are rich in organic content those things we will be dealing in uh, detail specific gravity is uh, around 2.8 and translucency it is semi translucent regarding the chemical properties that is it has the highest inorganic content in dental tissues coming regarding cementum and dentine it has highest inorganic content that is 96 percentage organic content is 4 percentage in the inorganic content it has basically the hydroxy appetite that is calcium phosphate and ions such as strontium magnesium lead fluoride and the organic portion basically the proteins such as amelogens amelogenins and non amelogenins 90 percentage of the total protein belong to amelogenin which is low molecular weight which is rich in proline histidine amino acids also glutamine and leucine whereas non amelogens which is around only just 10 percentage which has high molecular weight proteins are ameloblastin uh, teftalin enamelin proteins and they have amino acids such as uh, glycine uh, serine aspartic acid 
so we have various structures to learn in enamel uh, these are very important because it is a short note questions sometimes this will be asked as long essay so we have various structures in enamel such as rods road sheath inter prismatic substance the striations are important direction of enamel rods are important hunter sugar bands incremental lines of red cs surface structures of enamel enamel cuticle enamel lamellae enamel tufts dentino enamel junction odontoblast process and enamel spindles so these all can be asked as short notes so all are very very important so there might be uh, a question like hypocalcified structures so all are not hypocalcified structures some are hypocalcified structures because they are not properly mineralized okay so if not properly mineralized that become hypo and if it is over mineralized that becomes hyper so hypo means it is not up to the normality hyper means it is above the normality whatever it is hypoplasia uh, hyperplasia we know so it depends on the normal up to the normality so normally it is uh, reaching it is fine if it is not reaching its maturation its function its work then we call it as hypo and the remaining part will uh, give the idea of that sentence hypo calcified so the calcification is not proper it is less than normal so among these the hypo calcified structures are road sheath incremental line of red cs enamel lamellae enamel tufts enamel cracks enamel spindle and neonatal lines so these might be asked as a separate question what are the hypo calcified structures of enamel so that time you need to write all these structures not the entire structures so we'll start one by one first we have enamel rods which is cylindrical in shape it starts from dej to the towards the outer enamel surface so this blue line the second blue line inside is the dentino enamel junction okay so the pink uh, the brown uh, uh, lines are enamel and the pink lines are dentine so this is the dentino enamel junction so it starts from dentino enamel junction towards the outer surface so the number is 5 million uh, in left lateral incisor lower lateral incisor it is around 5 million and upper first smaller it is around 12 million in number that is enamel rods and its course is tortuous so it is tortuous starting from dj to outer surface it is not going in a straight line it is having a tortuous course so it starts from dj to outer surface of enamel and length uh, uh, regarding the length it is greater than the thickness of enamel because since it is a tortuous uh, course so it is not going straight line okay so if it is going straight line the length might be lesser since it is going tortuous so this is the thickness of enamel since it is in a tortuous way if we straighten this line it will be more than this total thickness okay so that is why i'm saying the thickness is greater than uh, sorry the length is uh, greater than the thickness of enamel so this is the thickness between two lines this is thickness so since it is a tortuous way if we straighten up this tortuous enamel this will be definitely greater than the thickness of enamel so the length is greater than thickness and diameter is 4 micrometer it increases from the dj to outer enamel surface by a ratio of 1 is to 2 so at dj it is 1 and outer enamel it is 2 that is diameter usually it is 4 micrometer at dj it is 1 means at outer surface it will be 8 okay so at dj if it is 2 outer surface it will be 4 so it appear as very clear crystalline nature in light microscopy we have uh, these roads shape as hexagonal okay so this is a basic picture of an enamel it will be hexagonal or fish scale appearance so in light microscopy this rods that is enamel rods appear as hexagonal shape so this is hexagonal that means hexa means six so six sides one two three four five six so basically this enamel rods are hexagonal in shape because it looks like uh, a asymmetrical with uh, asymmetrical structures with six 
sides okay so that is why it is hexagonal in shape whereas in cross section okay when we do cross section so cross section it looks like fish scale appearance okay fish scale appearance in cross section and in light microscopy it is hexagonal in shape then arcade outline pattern uh, near DJ and keyhole outline at enamel surface so enamel surface it looks like a keyhole appearance okay so all these are very very important keyhole appearance fish scale appearance hexagonal in shape arcade outline pattern so arcade outline pattern near dentino enamel junction okay so why it is important because of interwoven network of roads teeth can resist masticatory forces up to 20 to 30 pounds per tooth that is why it is clinically significant because of its interwoven network of roads so fish scale appearance it is not uh, very plainly arranged there is interwoven arrangement so it can resist up to 20 to 30 pounds of uh, force per tooth so don't forget fish scale appearance keyhole appearance hexagonal appearance and arcade outline near tentino enamel junction okay so this ultra structural or electromicroscopic uh, view gives the keyhole also known as paddle paddle shaped prisms which has 9 micrometer in length and 5 micrometer in breadth so we are talking about enamel rods okay so the first structure in enamel enamel rods so bodies of these rods always seen near the occlusal or incisal surface so occlusal or incisal surface the enamel rod bodies will be seen and the tails okay so the tails will be at the cervical area so if this is particularly a tooth okay so at this area occlusal surface there will be body of enamel rod and the cervical area there will be tail of enamel rod so that is about enamel rod now we have hydroxy apatite crystals so they are arranged parallel to the long axis of rod which has point 0 0.05 to 1 micrometer with 90 micrometer which has pyramidal shape and the hydroxy apatite crystals are uh, placed within this hexagonal shape so that is about uh, enamel rods and hydroxy apatite crystals now let's see about rod sheath so the next structure is rod sheath which is a thin peripheral layer which is more darker than the uh, enamel uh, rods and which is uh, less calcified more organic content so because of this reason it is more acid resistant than the enamel rods because it has less calcification or more organic content than the rods because the decalcification or acid is acting on the minerals so there will be demineralization so less calcification means less demineralization more calcification more demineralization since it has less mineral content than the roads the acid resistance will be more because there will be less calcification and uh, it is uh, basically incomplete uh, structure it looks like incomplete structure uh, in electron microscopic examination the next thing uh, we have interprismatic substance so interprismatic substance is the substance which is present between the enamel prisms so they are the cementing uh, enamel rods together the structures which cement enamel rods together which is more calcified than the road sheath okay so this is more calcified than the road sheath but less calcified than the roads and it appears to be minimum in human teeth so that is about interprismatic substance next we have striations striations enamel rods is built up of segments of uniform length about 4 micrometer 
okay and these are separated by dark lines that gives it a striated appearance so there will be a striated appearance due to the dark lines and they are more visible by the action of mild acids the appearance is because of the formation of enamel matrix in a rhythmic manner so always the deposition of minerals or enamel formation or the matrix formation in a rhythmic manner so it will be layer by layer it will be added so there will be presence of striations between these layers and they are more pronounced in hypocalcified areas okay and what are the directions of these roads so the directions of roads are different in different region so the next thing is direction of uh, roads so these roads are oriented at right angles to the dentinal surface so the inner blue line is the dentinal surface so always it starts at right angle to the dentinal surface in the cervical uh, and and central portion of the crown of deciduous teeth they are approximately horizontal so at the cervical portion and central portion it is almost horizontal direction whereas at the incisal edge and tip of the cusp they change gradually to an increasingly oblique direction so you can see the change of this roads to a oblique angle uh, until they are almost vertical in the region of edge or tip of the cusp so almost vertical okay almost vertical at incisal edge or cusp tip so it is horizontal at cervical and middle portion of deciduous teeth so in permanent teeth the arrangement of rods is similar to deciduous teeth in occlusal two third so occlusal two third it will be almost same in the cervical region what happens is uh, it deviates from horizontal to more apical direction so its cervical portion it is more apically inclined in the permanent teeth okay so the alternative clockwise and counterclockwise uh, deviation of roads from radial direction can be observed at all level so there will be clockwise and counterclockwise because it has both right and left side so clockwise and counterclockwise deviation will be there so in deciduous teeth as i mentioned the roads are horizontal in cervical and central part of the crown near the incisal edge or uh, cusp tip they gradually increase in oblique direction and almost vertical at incisal tip or cuspal region incisal tip or cuspal uh, tip region and permanent teeth what happens is at the cervical portion the occlusal uh, tooth is almost same but in cervical region it deviates from horizontal to more apical direction okay so that is about the direction of roads now we have gnarled enamel it is also a uh, change in directional pattern because gnarled enamel is a very important short note so gnarled enamel is the near the dentin in the region of cusp or incisal edge what happens is this is incisal tip okay incisal tip or cusp tip so what happens is the bundles of road seem to intertwine more irregular and especially in a uh, section which is cut obliquely so this optical appearance of enamel is called as gnarled enamel so you can see this is almost horizontal the pattern is more rhythmic and uh, regular fashion but at incisal edge or cusp tip this uh, roads what happens to the roads these bundles of roads which seem to intertwine intertwine more so intertwining of roads will be there at incisal edge or cusp tip so this particular intertwining of bundles of road that is known as small dynamal and this is a optical appearance at the incisal tip or cuspal edges so in addition the enamel rods they converge in outward course in pits and fissure occlusal surface of molars and premolars okay so in occlusal surface of molars and premolars what happens to these enamel rods they converge in outward course okay when it is going outward they converge next we have enamel spindle so enamel spindle is end of odontoblastic processes which is penetrating the enamel and 
passing the dentino enamel junction okay so odontoblastic processes which penetrates so odontoblastic processes from the dentinal side which penetrates enamel and dj okay which is known as enamel spindle okay that is enamel spindle okay so this all comes under directions of rods null enamel and enamel spindle now we have very important structure which is known as hunter sugar bands which is a very common question so that's about the uh, beginning part of enamel that is uh, we have covered the basic properties of enamel then the structures like rods rod sheath interprismatic substances and uh, variation in striations and variations in directions of rods so now we'll move to the uh, next part of enamel where we'll be dealing with the very important hunter sugar bands incremental lines of red cs and various surface structures such as perichaemata prismless structure enamel cups enamel brooches that comes under enamel rod ends neonatal line enamel uh, cuticle that is nasmith's membrane uh, then enamel spindle uh, so all this will be dealt in next session uh, as it is going very lengthy a video so we are stopping this session here till uh, directions of roads so we'll be coming with uh, these topics that is incremental lines of red cs under sugar bands and various surface structures in my next video thank you